Ian Blackwood Talks Smack Podcast. My guest today, Matt Gass. What's up? Matt is a stand-up comedian and an actor based in Toronto. Yes. Matt, how are you? I am uh, great. Thank you for having me on the show today, Ian. I'm uh, very fortunate to be here in this lovely establishment. Dude, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. That was a... Very formal. I should replace the intro with your, with your intro. That's uh, what most people do when I, when I say hi to them. I... <laughs> That's to be the case. I have very good introductions, and unfortunately, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I love it. He's got the blue, the blue Jays cap on. We are in baseball season, are we not? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. We are in uh, full swing. Yeah, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> we'll be here all, all the podcast, guys. Nice. <laughs> all right, I want to talk. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about yeah. your start, Matt, in uh, in stand up comedy. How? Why comedy? And what was the uh, what was the spark? Good question. Was there a spark? Has there ever been? Maybe there isn't. Uh, you know what? The, the spark, the spark. I think there's been too much spark, to be honest with you. Uh, I've always been told that I had a little too much attitude in school. I was uh, a little bit of a shit talker, if you will. Um, and then basically to get right down to it, Steve Jobs died. Uh, <laughs> Steve Jobs died and he, and someone was like, oh, Steve Jobs gave this amazing speech at Stanford about living your dreams and chasing your life. And I had just quit playing basketball. Uh, I was playing university basketball, at university of Ottawa at the time. Right. And I just quit playing basketball because one of my friends was like, Hey man, you want to smoke a joint? And I was like, sure. What's that? I hadn't smoked weed pretty much my whole life that much. I uh, smoked a tube and fell much more in love with doing that than playing basketball. basketball. And I was like, I want to be a student, man. So I quit playing basketball. I was at a crossroads in my life. Steve Jobs died. Speech gets shared. And he's all like, find what it is that you love to do and make a career out of it. And I was like, okay. Well, I love to lie. I like to tell stories. Mm -hmm. And I like to bullshit. And I like to make fun of people. And I always get kicked out for making fun of my teachers. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, I was always better in the locker room than I was on the basketball court and uh, hung out my shoes and haven't shut up since. So that's, wow. that's kind of it, to be honest with you. I just, uh, and also I wanted to become, I also wanted to be an actor. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I eventually I've always wanted to just have I'm an arrogant person and I just wanted people to hear my opinion sure, uh, yeah, and, sure. and I just wanted to express myself. Yeah, of course. So uh, that's where, that's where it started. Basketball. And that's because you're yeah. six foot eight. Are you not six? This guy foot is eight, six yeah. foot that's eight. That's right. I am very tall. <laughs> He's a tall, <laughs> tall gentleman. Like, geez, there, man. there's uh there's varying degrees of tall. There's uh Hey, that guy's tall. Then there's, wow, that guy's tall. Then there's, Oh boy, he's tall. Then there's get a camera as heads poking above the bathroom stall. That's that's, <laughs> that's amazing. Le that's the level I'm Which at. makes sense. So so you were you quite a good basketball player though? Or you uh, I was not. No. Oh, okay. Um, so you're just a tall guy that could Yeah. <laughs> Story of my life. Very good at starting things. Okay. Very, very, very good at picking things up. Yeah, yeah. I okay. can pick anything up and look very good at doing it, but I'm not very good. I'm very good at picking it up, but I'm not very good at holding on to it is my uh, problem. Okay. So, like, I'm very good at playing basketball, high school this, and like, okay, now you're going to have to actually work hard for it. And I was like, oh, I can't just be tall and stand here anymore. <laughs> And they're yeah, like, that's amazing. you know, I was like, I can't just put oh. my hands up and just, I can't just be six, eight and just, just be like, that's all. the I guy I who misses 12 times and gets his rebound. <laughs> so you weren't a great basketball player. Wasn't that good? No, oh, okay. but I, but then no, I was not, um, but I was, that's the thing is like, I was at one, one time my coach once said to me, I, I think I blocked the shot or I got a rebound, outlet the ball, ran past it to my outlet, ran down, caught the ball on a, on a fast break and dunked it on a guy in practice. And my coach was like, man, if I could just bottle that shit and sell it, I would. Why can't you do that every time? <laughs> and to be honest with you, as soon as he said that, I was like, well, that's enough. That's all I need. And uh, I'll go back to coasting now because I could, I'm very good on, on riding waves of confidence. Gotcha. <laughs> between waves of confidence. Gotcha. Well, hey. <laughs> so do you okay and here's a, here's the thing I, I have about comedy and I've yeah. always wanted to try it but um, and I don't want to sound like some asshole it's like don't. oh I just want to give it a try man yeah, I feel like you just try it. I think everyone I, needs to try once okay so yeah and I, I took uh, I took Second City I did uh, okay. Level A and I really enjoyed the improv mm -hmm. side of it and I mean there were some pretty awesome people in the class when I did this is going back like 2004 so <laughs> geez like 14 years but anyway um, do you remember the first time you bombed <laughs> Well, isn't that why we had to restart the podcast? Because my had uh, isn't that why I, why I got a really good intro? Because that was my third take. Of, yeah. no, you know, I'm kidding. Uh, first bomb. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I first time I ever did stand up was at Absolute Comedy, which is like Disneyland for comedians. Okay, uh, beautiful audience. It's just it, it's it's if if an audience was if stand up comedy was a BM, was BMX. 
the audience at Absolute Comedy would be like a foam pit you're diving off into, whereas most audiences is asphalt. Oh, okay. okay. Absolute Comedy, you can get up there and say your name, and they're like, oh my God, he said his name. There's a fucking platypus on the wall. This is amazing. Uh, okay. okay. Um, I did, that was my first ever set, and it was packed with a bunch of people I know. Uh, a lot of people, when they do stand up, they're like, some people are like, oh, I don't want to tell anyone. I want to go in there and do it. I know that I'm a coward. And I figured I value more my reputation than I do my actual pride. So if yeah. I figured I told everyone and they showed up, I would have to go through with it. So they all came and went very, very well. Had a lot of fun. Great set. The very next night, I did it in a bar called the Lafayette in Ottawa. A small, dingy dive bar with an old lady uh, drinking uh, one of those big cans of beer, screaming at me the entire time. <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, and that's when... And the night of my first night, the guy after the show, uh, the guy who runs the open mic was like... Uh, don't get used to it because this isn't comedy, kid. Right, comedy yeah, okay. is eating shit in basement bars. And I was like, I'm never going to eat shit. The very next day, I was like, oh, this is uh, not as delicious as I thought it would be. <laughs> wow. So, and is, is, is that something that kind of sticks with you a little bit sometimes? Like, do you always remember that little No, moment? that one, I know it, it's become just part of the job, I'd say. Right. Uh, right. Every night, every day, every, every job, you have bad days. Sure. You know, every. Every every industry, some days you're gonna like it. You're gonna be like, "This is why I got into this." And some right. days you're like, oh, "Well, fuck, this is why it's still a job." <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I did an open. I was practicing some material at a show. I forget it was a mic or a real show. I don't know. I think it was a show. Uh, I was booked on a show at a, at a weed room. Have you ever heard of those? No, they're weed room. vapor rooms where people just go okay. get smoke weed in a room sure. in Toronto, yeah. and cops are just like, "Whatever," hmm. because nobody ever will beat each other some fight in a weed room. Nobody ever gets in a fight Nobody in a weed room. Right. I mean, if you put like 100 people in a room and gave them unlimited alcohol, at the end of the night, numerous deaths. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you put a bunch of people in a room... Isn't that and like King them, and John? Isn't that I, isn't that just what that is? That is yeah, so the difference between King and John <laughs> and a weed room <laughs> yeah. is this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But if you, there'd be numerous deaths. But you put those 100 people in a room and give them unlimited weed, they'd just be like, oh, yeah. what the fuck did we get in here? Right. What are we... <laughs> right. Right. Is there any way out? Who who put us here? <laughs> I know, man. Smoke another dube. Yeah. So I'm at this weed room, and uh, I get up, and and I, and I kind of the audience was they were actually feeling it. It was one of those rare times the audience was enjoying the show, and I went up and I rode and I rode the energy, and as soon as I rode their energy to the point where I had to start doing material, I completely blanked. Oh. And I had one of those like, and I had just one of those moments where like I also had just done a dab for like the third time in my life, which is like the the concentrated weed. Uh, okay. That's like the point. That's like the if weed was coke, dabs would be like the crack cocaine of weed because they like extract it, mix it with butane, and then you light it with like a blowtorch. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. It's there's too much technology for me to just be considered weed, but I tried it. So I was like, "You want to do this?" And I was like, "What the fuck is that?" He's like, "It's a dab, bro." And I was like, "Sure." And I did the set, went up, and I looked at the audience. It was just like, you know what? This isn't going well and i looked at them i said i'm gonna go you probably have better things to do i probably have better things to do have a great night and i just went home you and actually I did that. just went home you I, actually did a good day to like you, i was like i was like i was up there i was like yeah you know you guys when you're like and then my inner voice went matt, matt you're really fucking high right now and i went you know what guys uh <laughs> i think uh Tonight's not gonna be a good. I think. I think. Uh, I think you guys. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go. Oh my I God. think you guys probably have better things to do than listen to what I have to say right now, and I've got better things to do than torture you with that. It sounds like you got a bad strain. It was yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> the next day, when the con, the guy ran ran the show, came up. He's like, "Dude, are you okay? Like, did you have a mental break?" And I was like, "Some days you just sort take, of. you know, like, yeah, sort of." I was like, "Some days you you know you just take an L. Some days I've had, <laughs> you just, just take, take a hard L. Some, days, a hard L. some days I don't care if you're if you go eighty and zero. Some days you get blown out. You know what I mean? Some days your stars I, dude, just don't show up to play. Speaking of acting, because you, you talked a little bit about um you know about acting, and I've had moments like that going into auditions where I've actually wanted to do. <laughs> that <laughs> I've done and, it. and then i've i've you've done it <laughs> i've tried to scrape it together and i scrape it together enough that it's terrible but you've actually done it yeah Wow, I'm impressed. I was, I went in. I, I didn't, I didn't read the sides. I looked at them. They're like, I would. They're like, uh, did you not read the sides? Like, to be honest with you, I didn't know there were any. And I was like, I should probably just go right now. And then no, I, I tried to pull it. I said, I, I, I went. Uh, I know I didn't know there were any sides. To be honest with you, I'm, and I, this is a lot to memorize. And they were just like, do you want to go take a second and try and come back a little later? And I was just like, not really. <laughs> That's actually wicked. Was this for a commercial or for TV? It was a film? commercial. And I See, was like, here's, to be honest with you, well, not really. Well, I, here's my here's my fucking argument with the commercial <laughs> stuff, and I'll say this now, and this should be known. This should be known around like the like the the city, and 
you're not you're not actually supposed to get sides. It's actually like a you like a, a it's it's supposed to be known. Really? Yes, because so the way commercial auditions are what supposed the and the way well the way is as as I understand it <coughs> for commercial auditions, you're supposed to get the sides when you get there. It's well, always been that you're supposed to get the copy when you get into the, so the, now the understanding behind that is because there's supposed to be this this sort of unwritten law of that you're an actor, but with commercial work it's a little bit different and they understand that there's they, no they, acting involved. Well, and not necessarily, right? <laughs> well, but so sometimes, sometimes, but, but at the same time, they also understand that you also have other jobs and have other things yeah. to tend to. Yeah. So you're, it's supposed to be this like, oh, you, you walk in, you get the sides, you, you do what you can, and then you get the callback. And the callback is where you can do your study. Right. And do your, but yeah, I don't know what happened. And I remember reading about that. And now I don't know what happened in like in the industry, but all of a sudden, you know, sides start coming out, but then you get, of course, people who want to prepare. So of course people are going to prepare, but realistically what was supposed to, as far as I know, and yeah. I could be totally wrong now. And you know, maybe someone out there will just correct me or just fucking you yell know, at me you or know somebody is going to correct but, you. This is the I'm, internet. But all, yeah. I, all, I'm saying is, all I'm saying is we aren't actually supposed to really, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but I do, I mean, I see both arguments. I see the side of going into something slightly prepped, totally cool. But at the same time to flip it, uh, out of respect for, for the artist who has other jobs and another life, yeah. I get it too. It's like, dude, if I'm supposed to just look at the camera and you know say like, I enjoy this tea, like <laughs> oh, why? You the part. Why do I? Good. Well, why do I have to? You know, so yeah. yeah. But th that's hilarious that you actually were like, nah, man. No, here. I'm. Uh, there's no point for this. I <laughs> I don't see the point of this. Nice. Well, hey, I want to talk a little bit about ITV. Okay, and yeah. a show, a little show called Made Up. Yeah, that was my. Uh, Oh boy, that was the the best thing that ever happened to me. The worst thing that ever happened to me. And uh, holy shit, yeah, that was. Is YTV still around, by the way? Yeah, I think they're still around. Okay, they're still around. It's yeah. like a it's like a teenage sort of youth channel. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a uh, teenage Canadian channel. broadcast channel. It's kind of yeah. like Canada's Disney. Yeah, there you teen, go. Yeah. Disney XD is the equivalent. It actually aired on Disney XD in the uh, states right, and cool. YTV here. Nice. Um, Talk yeah, about that, a bit of it. You were one of the co-hosts on that show. Yeah, right? I was the. My role was the acting coach on That's that show. Um, that show was a dream come true, man. I moved to. I just. I was living in LA for six months, and then I moved to Toronto after that uh, with like eight bucks. And I mean, I'm not from a poor family, like so. It's not as I only had eight dollars, and I made everything come true. No, I had eight dollars and too much pride to ask my mom for a loan. Right. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I had an ego problem, not right, a money right, problem. Right. 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 But, Such uh, as the most stories. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. No, I didn't want to do it that way. <laughs> I had all the options in the world, and this is why this counts. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I had like zero dollars to my name. I was crashing on my buddy's couch. Then I was able to splurge up enough money doing background acting work to get a one, one month sublet on an apartment where there was like no furniture. I was crashing on a bed with no sheets, no shower curtain, eating like tuna and eggs just because I was like, oh, I'm not going to ask for money. This is the life of a fucking starving artist, <laughs> like an idiot. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then I'm like moving to one of my other buddy's place, another comedian who wasn't around. I'm living on the floor on a blow up mattress. Then one day I'm at a S Starbucks where I get a phone, uh, Starbucks. I do this audition, right? I get this audition for this YTV show. And this is around like a week after Robin Williams died. I was a big Robin Williams fan. Okay. And again, I have zero interior motivation. Uh, everything is exterior motivation right. for me. Right. Robin Williams died. And again, someone shared a meme. <laughs> and it was something about like, Robin Williams said a quote and he was all like, uh, something about kindness or the true, true meaning or like something about, uh, madness. You're only born with a simple spark of madness. You mustn't lose it. Right. And the other one was something along the lines of uh, sadness. True ha sadness. A true tragedy is dying. Is not dying alone. Is dying in a room full of people that make you feel like you're alone. Oh. Right. So it hit me, and I was like, oh, Robin. And I was a big fan of Robin. I was growing up as a kid. Yeah, it's deep actually. And yeah, very let deep. Let that ruminate in my head for me. You know right? what I mean? Let it bounce around in yeah, there yeah, a little yeah. bit. And uh, and uh, I was a big fan of Robin Williams, and I was always very manic growing up. Uh, in high school, and, uh, and I myself had the I I, stay, I got some mental issues as well. I mean, who doesn't in the in the industry? What's sure. I, for, I mean, I feel like these days, every the only mental issue, mental illness left is like not having a mental illness. Like everyone's <laughs> got something now, right, right, um, right? But I'll just pour it on. Yeah, man. So like for me, I got real emotional, and I went to that audition, and I just and the audition was proved to us in one minute why you should be the host of this, why you should be on this show. Oh wow, okay. And it was like we're looking for characters, accents, voices, blah 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 blah. So I came out, and I just pounded through some accents, voices, and I was like, uh, fuck, I just came in high energy, 
<laughs> and I was just like, hey guys, my name is Matt. Uh, why should I be on the show? Well, because uh, I love to do Quebec accents. I'm from Montreal and I can speak with the Quebec accent if that's what you're wanting me to do. Or maybe I could be from France if that's something you're looking for. Perhaps if you're a got from Ireland, you're learning a leprechaun. Oh, I could be your leprechaun host. But not if you're looking for a Scottish lad, I'll knock your fucking face off. Because that's what I'll do. But then Dan Andamite, you know, look at me like that. And they're going to talk like Australian accent. And then I went through like everything. I went like, oh, I went to Italian, I've been through mm. blah, 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 blah. I went through, like a full minute. Every accent I had, every character voice, I did conversations with myself. And I was like, well, what do you think about him? Well, I really like the show, but I think he could have been a little more in the end towards there. Oh, I really thought that? Well, his improv skills that I went like back and forth. The cameraman gave me one of those like, what the fuck? <laughs> he's looks. like, he's like, he's like, he's like yeah, headphone, headphones off, just slowly sliding and panning. <laughs> what the fuck am I looking? Is this guy okay? Is this guy okay? <laughs> and then uh, I just said, thank you guys very much. And, oh, and at the end, I was like, if you want to know more, why more, why should me on the show, just book me. Thank you guys very much. Nice. And I just left. And then I got a call back from my agent. She's like, are you sitting down? And I was like... <laughs> No, I'm no, at I'm Starbucks standing. trying to get a coffee right now. She's like, oh, well, you don't have to sit down anyways. That was just for effect. And I was like, <laughs> are you sitting down? I, I wish they all started with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Are you sitting down? She's like, I just got you a big role, yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's not for the role of the host, which you went out for. They liked you so much. They created a role called acting coach or whatever. Oh, no way. Uh, you're going to do this. You're going to do that. And we got you X amount of money per episode. And me being like, uh, uh, for lack of better terms, a fuck boy was very happy about this. <laughs> Uh, I had a lot of money coming towards my way, and I finally was a star of a TV show, and I was go. like, I'm the coolest guy alive. And then uh, I made a lot of bad decisions, which would be another whole other podcast. Okay. Uh, we'll save that for another time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> decisions that, and, and a lot of bad decisions, and it all started with the fact that uh, I was in heaven for my first three days working on that show, and then three days in, I remember like the fourth day I got up to go on to set at like 6 a.m., and I remember the alarm went off, and I said, I don't know. And it, right away, and I, and, and I didn't even know I said there was like, it was at the back. And then I literally, my inner me, you know, that like Kermit with the fucking, that meme with Kermit, like inner yeah, me, yeah, inner yeah, bitch yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I don't want to go to work today. Oh. And outer me was like, what the fuck? This is your dream come true. Yeah. And then ever since then, I think there's been a war about like, oh. like, I thought that that would be the dream. And then I did it. And then like a couple of days in, I was like, ah. And then mm. with everything leading up, I was like, well, now I know I get why Robin did it. Like, if that was his motivation, oh, yeah, well. it got dark. Sorry to get dark there. But like, no, it's no, okay. sorry to get dark. But that, and that, that's why, because I, I started like all my life, this is all I ever wanted. And I was like, uh, uh. And I was like, and, I do, and it's just work now. And then I had to go through a, but I think best thing that ever happened to me, because eye opener, because now like, you know, then I started training jujitsu because I started really testing myself. I started right. learning about what it was that drove me. I went through this whole like, find la passion, amigo. <laughs> What's yeah. uh just before we talk? Yeah, I want sorry. to talk a little jujitsu yeah. and, and and mixed martial arts. But uh, just just briefly, so listeners and viewers know what what was the show? Uh, how did the show really work? Like in, sorry, in, yeah. in a thirty second breakdown of, of I got uh, really depressed up. talking about a Disney show. No, there. it's okay. Is- <laughs> <laughs> I just so people understand. They, yeah. they, they know. So uh, it's a hidden camera prank show for kids. No, there you go. Hidden camera prank show. Uh, hidden camera prank show where uh, kids would they would dress up. They would take kids and they had like a really high end uh, makeup artist throw on uh, like bad grandpa style makeup. Kids would look really old weird we would take like a little girl make her look up an old jazz musician uh and then we would go ahead and prank the public to get them used to being that character that was my job to come like get the kid comfy with it right 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 uh and i was just an over-the-top goofy like kind of like uh i i kind of liked to be a little bit of a edgier version of uh john lithgow john lithgow oh, okay uh Dick for Third Rock for the Sun. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> Third Rock for the Sun. Uh, yeah, uh, that guy there, John Lithgow, tried to be like an edgier version of him, which is mm. like kind of like super theatery, but funny and yeah, edgy, yeah. cool, because uh, it was like an older piddly crowd. And then we would prank the public, then they would prank their parents, and then after that, uh, the big reveal would be on. Everybody would be like, oh my God, you guys, this is just a prank show? Oh my God. And then we'd be like, and wait, there's more. That's your kid. Uh, Whoa, man. kid, I had no clue. And then I'd be like, hey. Uh, and there was another host who did all that stuff, and That's I was right. just like, during the prank, I got to be like the Dak Shepherd of the group. I kind of just oh, nice. was involved in it. It was actually super fun. It was really cool. Nice. Yeah. I made Sorry I couldn't help you with the third rock of the sun there. No, no like... problem. No problem. <laughs> I'll uh, let you hang. Dick Solomon is Dick the Solomon. name. Dick go. Solomon for everyone. Uh, nice. For everyone that's not, wasn't going to be able to sleep tonight, trying to find that name. Nice. So Brazilian Jiu Jitsu yeah. uh, and uh, um, uh, Muay Thai. Is it Muay Thai? Muay Thai. Yeah. 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 How did that, uh, how did that stuff come about? 
Uh, well, the Muay Thai is a lot more casual than the BJJ was. Okay. I never competed Muay Thai. I didn't compete. Uh, I just trained it very intensely for like uh, two years and very, very intensely. This was part of finding yourself, right? Yeah, this was the, this is the, uh, what drives me? <laughs> the, the, yeah. I had that, who am I yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I kind of did the same thing. <laughs> who am I? Who am I? <laughs> <laughs> Call it my quarter life crisis, if you will. But, uh, yeah, um, I started. Uh, I started that. Um, I always wanted to. Here's the deal: is like I've always been like a skinny, tall, loud mouth. And when I was younger, I was kind of pudgier, and I always got like the older because I was so big. Older kids used to torment me a lot, so I kind of always had uh, got like not like not picked on, but almost beat up. And when I'd go out to clubs, I could do a lot about this in my stand up. Or guys are always like, "Yeah, hey, bro, you think you're so fucking tall." And I'm like, well, I mean, I don't think I'm so fucking tall, you know? And guys tried to fight me. And I, and I always had this insecurity that I didn't know how to defend myself. So I started doing that because I was like, I want to be able to kick someone's ass. So I want to learn. And I was a big fan of MMA. Neighbors of mine were like, you got a body like Anderson Silva. You're all like little torso, arms yeah, and legs for absolutely. days. Yep. And they showed me what he was doing to people. And I was like, you mean my body can do that? <laughs> I can do that too. Yeah. Like basketball, by co I had long legs and a little, little torso of basketball. That doesn't right. really do much for you to be all gangly. I mean, it does, but like it's not as advantageous when you could like punch someone from a mile away like a sniper right. you know what I mean right. so I uh, started doing that uh, I saw there was a 30 day trial at a gym and I signed up for that sent my info and I started getting emails like every day be like you're gonna come by you're gonna come by from this like auto responder and one day the email was like are you afraid and I was like this motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker I was right like, here I was like your email funnel system just worked. <laughs> and I was like, I'll see you there. <laughs> you peer pressured me perfectly. And then I just, yeah, and then I just found it was really good. There was no better feeling I got from like training and it was yeah. just mental and physical. I love the, uh, I mean, I love the, the, the mental trials it puts you through. I love the, especially the BJJ man, like there's nothing, there's nothing more humbling. Like, you know, you, like you get a, you get a guy tying you up. You know, you got a guy taking your back, or you, you get a nice slipping in a choke, and yeah. like you tap and tap and tap, and you know, you go months tapping and months tapping, and maybe half a year tapping, and then maybe finally you get a submission on someone, or you got my, you good. know, get, it feels good. But all of that other time, just getting humbled, humbled, pummeled, humbled, I call it the humble pummel, and like, yeah, man, that that's the thing yeah. about BJJ is I just, and I love that it's, I, I'll talk about this all the time. I love how definitive it is. I love that you get to practice it at every class. You know, you do, I don't know what you guys do because you're, you're at open mat, right? Yeah, open mat, MMA. Mat at uh -huh. open mat, mat, open dad joke. Funny, uh, <laughs> I have a, remind me of a very funny story about that in the Disney show. Uh, oh yeah? A very funny story about that. Uh, can I tell it now? Sure. Yeah, yeah go for it. Sorry, yeah. yeah. So uh, the, one of the guys at the gym, personal trainers and coaches has two kids and the show, while it filmed like three years ago, only aired recently this fall, this last fall, oh, or wow, 2017, okay. 2016. Right. And uh, I was working and working full time, mad at open mat, but the jokes just don't stop. Uh, and then one of the one time, one of the guys, the trainers and coaches, was like, "Hey, my kids were watching YTV, and guess whose show came there on? There you were, there you were." <laughs> and I was like, "And I was like, oh, that's so cool." And it was, he was like, "Yeah, they were so impressed." And I was like, "Oh, thanks, man, that's awesome." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And he's like, "They were like, oh, wow." you know this guy? And he was like, yeah. He's like, my, you made, my, made me look so cool. And I was like, that's amazing. They were like, yeah, you know him, dad? And I was like, yeah. If you call open Matt, he'll answer the phone right now. <laughs> And I was like, and that's when I was like, this is going to be one of my new friends and work friends right here. <laughs> well, that is the story of the actor. That is the story right? of the entertainment the industry Especially person. the Canadian uh, Especially the Canadian oh entertainer. God. Yeah, if you call that place, right, you call that grocery store oh right now, God. he's stocking the shelf. Like, I'm actually writing a web series about that that I'm trying oh, to get nice. picked up right now. It's exactly about that. It's about three comics trying to make it oh, nice. in the city, and they're just con met with constant adversity. The tagline is... Uh, uh, sometimes comedy can be tragedy, you know. And the nice. other, and the, the log line for the show is uh, uh, the sad lives of comedians trying to make it in the Canadian industry is actually hilarious. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's hundred percent true. <laughs> nice man. Well, uh, back to jujitsu. Sorry. Yeah, no, you know I, what? Are we um, out? Well, no, I'm going to do. I just I, I do a final. I'm going to keep okay. it on to jujitsu for the final segment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the final segment is it's it's just a little thing I call shit I'm into. Oh, I love shit you're into. Yeah, you love shit. I I'm love into. the shit you're into. This is why we're such good friends. <laughs> we yeah. like the same things. <laughs> do we just get me? Do you want to do karate in the garage? <laughs> um, so uh, I'm really in. I I do a lot of reading. I read a lot of books, and I, I people, I'm definitely going to get comments eventually <laughs> saying, "Dude, how can you possibly read that many fucking books?" Obviously, I've just I've like accumulated the books that you I've read over years. Them or so, fully read no, them. I fully read them, but Damn, good uh, I don't really read. 
I've read these over the few years. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, yeah. using them now. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm admitting on camera right now that Sorry, it's like, I didn't just read a book in a week. Never I'm, bring a comedian on your show. <laughs> <laughs> He'll expose you by mistake. <laughs> he exposed everything. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, I, 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 the, the book, I really, really like the book. We're talking about uh, jiu-jitsu. We're talking MMA. Yeah. I really love the book, uh, The Way of the Fights, the GSP book. I don't know if you've read that. Have you read this book? I've heard about it. Oh, dude, Is so it, good. Yeah. Even Not even for the martial artist. Like, and and nice. not, just, for, just for life stuff, man. Like He's got... It, some ama- some of the most amazing stories, struggles. Anyway, you know he's he's you know working a full time job and then taking a bus to New York so he can do jujitsu on his two days off and, and take, like a mega bus. Like anyway, GSP the way of the fight. You guys got to read it. It's really good. Matt, what is the shit you're into? Shit that I'm into right now. Uh, oh man, I mean my jobs are the two things I love to do the most and are involved in those. That's right. How I so I mean shit I'm into is really relaxing. I guess when like I get to do everything I want to do all day. Almost to a professional degree in in a self supporting self supporting way, I just relaxing. And one of the things I'm relaxing the most at doing right now is I'm uh, binge watching for the first time ever, The Sopranos. Oh wow! Yeah, I still it's, never have you've watched never seen that, that show. It's so. uh, I'm telling you, I know you, that it's epic. I'm telling you, it's one of the greatest shows ever. Yeah, I believe you. It's it's one of the like what I'm I watched. I can believe you. Hey. Hey, I gotta believe him. Hey, where the fuck is Gabagool? Hey, where the fuck is Kyle? Where the fuck is Gabagool? Hey, sorry, I swear to fuck of God. So, you're bi- so the shit you're into is, is The Sopranos. You're binge watching. Yeah, Sopranos. I'm just binge watching. I'm just the shit that I'm into. Yeah, and like, like hanging out with my girlfriend, playing nice. video games, and watching TV. Which video game do you, what do you Ah, uh, man, I've been playing of? a lot of Mario Party and Mario Kart nice. um, on multi platforms. Uh, oh, okay. My record in one day is I've played on five systems. <laughs> I played. Do you on, see these suckers over here? For uh, listeners no, and viewers, I'm, I'm pointing at all the minis I've got. Yeah, there's a the, lot of mini SNES models. and the, the the regular Nintendo Mini, and I got a Genesis Mini. I think I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Matt, you want to plug any socials right now? Yeah, we check wrap up? out. Uh, check. Follow me on my Instagram. Uh, I'm learning how to do stories. I'm doing really. So good. am I. Uh, we're all learning how to do Matt, stories. So it's a never ending story. This learning process. Oh, check it out. Plug, at plug. the Matt Gas. There, uh, Matt Gas was taken, but uh, arrogance wins. T H E M A T. T T G A S S. Uh, that kind of has a links to most of my stuff. Uh, watch out for if you ever hear of a series. It's, uh, we got some stuff in the books for you guys. Also, check out Comedic Gathering. That's my stand-up show that happens regularly. Follow that for updates on that. Mostly at the Matt Gas. And uh, thank you guys very much for listening. So much, Dude. so much fun. Matt Gas. Thanks so much for being here, brother. Nah, you're good, man. We'll do it again sometime. Thanks. Okay, thanks we'll, a lot. We'll, we'll talk more <laughs> jujitsu next time. Thanks a lot, Ian. thanks, brother. Thanks for having me.